All righty then, let's get started on our second half of the video on Le Chatelier's principle, how uh, we can affect the equilibrium and the direction of the reaction. In the previous video, we saw what happens if we alter the concentration. Now we're gonna look at what happens if we change the volume, i.e. the pressure and the temperature. So changing the volume. Once we have equilibrium established, what happens if we decrease the volume? Well, in our container, of course, we have some amount of gas and we have a pressure and that pressure comes from the gas colliding with the sides or the walls of that container. So if we decrease the volume, we're gonna get more collisions, we're gonna get an increase in pressure. How's that gonna affect our K and our direction of equilibrium? When the total pressure increases, equilibrium is gonna shift either towards the reactants or towards the products um, so that we get fewer gas molecules. So what this means is we have to look at each reaction specifically, the same way we did with K sub P and K sub C. And we found out what's the change in gas molecules. Are we seeing an overall increase in the number of moles of gas or a decrease? And that's gonna allow us to predict. So if we're decreasing the volume, we increase the pressure, and it's gonna cause the reaction to shift in the direction with the smaller number of gas particles or the lower moles of gas. So again, we're, I, like I said, we have to look at a specific reaction. So let's do that. Let's take a couple sample reactions. Let's grab this one right here. 2Br NO gas goes to give us two moles of NO gas and one Br2 gas. So if we count up everything here is a gas, I have two moles of gas on this side and three moles of gas on this side. I can think of the side with the additional moles of gas as also essentially then having pressure as one of its components. So in this case, pressure is a product because the product side has the larger number of gas molecules. So if we increase the pressure, what we're essentially doing is adding product. And if we add a product to one side, what happens? pushes it in the other direction. So in this case, we're trying to decrease, like I said, the number of gas molecules. So if we get an increase in pressure, we have to look at which side has the least number of gas molecules. This side, it's going to proceed in that direction. Or let's take another example now. Let's look at something different. Perfect. So now we'll take this example. We have uh, PCO3, so phosphorus trichloride and chlorine gas, and we have a reversible reaction and it makes uh, phosphorus, what, uh, pentachloride, there we go. Same way, everything's a gas, count up the gas molecules. Two moles of gas on this side, one on this side. So where's the pressure? Now the pressure is over here. Pressure would be considered a reactant because we have more moles of gas on the reactant side. So if I add more pressure here, if I decrease the volume, it's gonna go in that direction. This, in this case, increasing the pressure would push this towards the product side. All right, back to our slides. Increasing the volume is gonna cause a decrease in the pressure, and we would see the opposite thing happening. So if we go back to these and let's erase part of this. So now let's say instead of adding pressure, we're going to take pressure away. And what happens when we remove a reactant from one side? It gets pulled in the direction of the removal. So if pressure is a product and we start removing a product, it's gonna pull the reaction this way. Or if pressure is a reactant and we remove the reactant, if we increase the volume and decrease the pressure, it's gonna pull the reaction towards the direction of the removal. All right, if the number of moles are identical, 
then a change in volume will have no effect on the equilibrium. Adding an inert gas will have no effect on the equilibrium. And if we're talking about solutions, which don't really, aren't really affected by pressure, then changing the volume will have no effect. So we just have to look at the gases and how many moles of gas do we have on the reactant side and how many moles of gas do we have on the product side. Uh, gas phase reactions, what if we add a gas? Well, if we're talking about all gases and of course partial pressure is related to concentration, then adding a gaseous reactant or product is gonna affect it in the same way. Whereas if we're adding a reactant, it's gonna push it towards the product side. If the gas that we're adding is a product, it's gonna push it towards the reactant side. And adding an inert gas, like I said, is gonna have no effect on the position of equilibrium. All right, some more examples of changing that volume. So we have our nice container with our movable piston. We can bring it down and increase the pressure, decreasing the volume, or we can increase the volume and decrease the pressure. So in this case, I have four moles of gas on the reactant side and two on the product side. So if I increase the pressure, it's going to go to the side with the least number of gas molecules. If I decrease the pressure, it's going to go to the side with the greater number of gas molecules. And same thing. Yep. Pressure decreasing. All right. Temperature. So we have specifically, we know what exothermic and endothermic reactions are, and that's what we need to look at. And we really just need to think again of heat as either a reactant or a product and how that's going to affect that. So like I said, for an exothermic reaction, we're producing heat. We should see a negative delta H. So since we're producing heat, heat's a product. So if we increase the temperature, if we add a heat, if we add a product, it's going to push the reaction towards the reactant side. If we remove heat from an exothermic reaction, we're removing a product, it's going to pull it towards that direction. Endothermic reactions are the opposite. Endothermic reactions have a positive delta H. They require that energy be put in, so heat is going to be a reactant in this case, the same way. Add heat, add a reactant, push it towards the product side. Remove heat, remove a reactant, pull it towards the reactant. The other difference, unlike concentration, is remember that K, that equilibrium constant, is specific for that reaction at that temperature. So that also means that if we alter the uh, temperature, we're going to affect our K value as well. So you can see here, if we add heat to an endothermic reaction, we're going to increase the amount of products, we're also going to increase the value of K. So altering temperature will also affect our K. Uh, here's an example. We can see this reaction, N2O4 gas. It's endothermic, so heat's required, heat's a reactant. This is colorless, this is brown. So we can see at a very low temperature, this reaction is not favored to proceed towards products. But as we increase the temperature, as we add heat, we push it towards that NO2 side, and we're going to see more of those products being so last question here, consider the exothermic. So exothermic, negative delta H. This should be a forward reversible sign. Sorry about that typo. Heat is going to be our product. So what change is going to uh, cause the reaction mixture to shift right, shift towards the product side, make more of that NOCl. Adding product to the reaction mixture increasing the volume so therefore decreasing the pressure you can see we have three molecules of gas here and two there increasing the temperature or none of the above so none of the above if this is exothermic if we increase the temperature we add product that's not going to shift it to the right if we increase the volume we decrease the pressure well pressure is a reactant not a product so Removing that isn't going to shift it to the right either. And adding a product to it, that won't shift it to the right. That would also shift it to the left. So none of the above. Um, that covers all the material here. Work those end of chapter problems. When you're doing these, like I said, though, think of pressure and think of heat as either a reactant or a product. Find out which one it is and then treat it the same way you would by adding a reactant or a product or removing a reactant. Hopefully this video was helpful and I'll see you for the next chapter.